Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at uh, how to make this motion graphics animation in Blender. I'm going to be using geometry nodes but uh, you can also set this up without geometry nodes. It's a very very easy setup but uh, geometry nodes just makes it much much easier to do. So let's jump in. Uh, this was rendered in cycles but you can see there isn't that much of a difference uh, with the EV version in terms of uh, the quality. You can see you're basically getting the same thing and uh, so to start off we need an object to have to hold our geometry nodes what i want to start with is a, a curve circle and uh, to give it the disk shape i'm going to add a curve line and just use the curve to mesh and i use this line as the profile and that will give us the disk so if, if i change any of these values you can see i can make it larger and if i add a transform node i can even rotate this on the y to make it rotated but you see the rotation is not at the center so to make it at the center i just need to change the start to be negative 0.5 and now if you want to change the scale we can just use this scale here and you can see it's always scaling from the middle and i can even change the rotation of this so that we have a vertical option which i have in this here so if i change in I change this from flat i can make these to be vertical discs like that i, I just use a switch node uh, so i use a combined node i can connect this here rotate this 90 degrees which is 1.57 in radians to have the option where i can switch between vertical and flat i can use a switch node uh, with the vector option so i can connect this to false and then connect this to and now if i switch on this i can switch between uh, the two if i wanted to I, you can expose uh, this here uh, to manage the scale of these disks uh, but uh, from there we need to instance these so that we have several disks so i can use the instance on points and uh, these are going to be our instance and our points are going to be a vertical line mesh so that we have this going up like that but i want to change this from offset to end point uh, like that so that we can increase the count without changing the height we can use uh, the end here to adjust the height and uh, i also randomized uh, the scale a bit here in the instances so you can use a random a random value on the scale so that each instance is scaled randomly uh, like that i also don't want all the disks to be full disks so i can come here realize these instances and i use a delete delete geometry to delete some of the faces randomly using a probability so if we go if we use a random value and change the type to boolean we get this probability option uh, that we can use to select which faces are we we delete or we remove so if i reduce the polygon count here to one and just focus on this disk alone you can see how that can easily give us a sci-fi uh, thing now also i wanted to play with the rotation let me bring back the count here up and i bring this down so we have a disk like that i wanted to play with the rotation a bit and so i did a random option here with a combined xy connected this to this and uh, if i connect this to this i see we get we can rotate these randomly are the disks randomly giving us a nice sci-fi effect so i can use a same time node connect the seconds to either the maximum or the minimum and uh, i should be able to randomly rotate these so something like that i can control the speed by adding a math node multiply with whatever value i want if i want to speed it up I just increase this value slow it down uh, like that we have to do the texturing adding the effects and everything uh, that gives it the sci-fi look uh, like that and you can see i'm using a few images and uh, some image sequences are for some of the loading screen uh, textures you can see this kind of loading effect here uh, that is an animated a sequence each of the disks has a different uh, image and i can even randomize that by using some of the options here i can use the hud seed to give each each disk a random texture a new texture creating a totally different animation without doing a lot of work that's what we're going to do here first we're going to create a new material that we're going to use for the disks so i'll call this disk and i use a set material use the disk material let me switch this to a shader editor and uh, look at how we're going to approach this first thing we're going to do is uv unwrap these uh, so if you go to textures image texture and uh, get any image texture that you want say something like this image sequence and uh, try to preview it you, you don't really see anything uh, because we have not uv unwrapped this properly so what i'm going to do is set up some uvs and uh, i'm going to store them into 
named attribute called UVs. It's going to be a vector and, uh, and I can also use it here uh, through the attributes UVs. And uh, unwrapping disks like this is very simple. All you have to do is go to the curves that uh, create those disks. Uh, so for, for example, this curve here, uh, we can get its length and use it for the x coordinates of the UV and uh, get this uh, other curve that we use at the profile, uh, this line here as a profile gets its uh, length and use it as the y component of the texture coordinates. So I'm going to do a capture attribute and I use a spline parameter. This will give us the length and the factor. We just need this here and uh, I can use an combine xy here because we want to capture uh, the, the factor when this is a curve, transfer it to the stored attribute when this is a mesh. So I'm just going to capture this here, connect it to the Y, to the X. Now let's make sure that uh, everything is working correctly. Ah, oh, we are not previewing. Let's preview this here. And you can already see that uh, since we capturing this factor and transferring it as the X coordinates, we are getting the X coordinates here through the length of this. We can do the same thing here, just capture uh, the factor or the length of this line and uh, transfer it as use it as the y component and you can see we have coordinates and that make sure that uh, you can see that uh, we have some ni nice mapping and uh, even the animation is working correctly let me get another animation made quite a few animations yeah you can see we have even this loading screen let me first restrict the just this to one disk and uh, I'm actually going to expose the probability and the count here so that I can access them easily. Okay, so you can see what we're having and uh, I can even bring the subdivisions back up and uh, if I increase this the resolution, I get more smaller subdivisions. So in my original version, you can see that uh, I have the ability to switch to randomize uh, the textures or the these details here. HUD design seed. So to do that, uh, we're going to create some complicated shaders here. So I'm going to just use two here. So I'm going to use another version here. Let's create, let me come to something like this. Still needs the mapping. I see what we're getting. Now maybe let's also grab a third one. I'll show you how to make these designs easily within Blender and how to animate them quite easily as well. So let's say we want each disk, this example where we have multiple disks like this. Let's say we want each disk to have a different texture. What we can do is give them a different color that we could use up here. What I can do is just come around after the realization here. I can create a selection of different islands by using the random value on here. And if I preview this, you can see we're getting a, a random value, but it's for each vertex or each point. What we want is a random value for each island. So to do that, we just need an ID to inform the random node that we want a random value for each of the islands, not just for each of the vertex. Grab a mesh island and uh, that will give us each island's index and uh, we can use that ID to inform our random value and uh, that gives us a random color like that. Now what I can do is I uh, just need that to be stored i'm just going to call this random and i just use that connect that value there and now i should be able to just use it here so random now if i preview that you can see how we have captured that into our shader to use it here all you need to do is just blend the two the different sets like this this with this this with this have a math node a math node that creates a selection depending on the value put in here. So I can use a 0.5 and uh, meaning that half of these will get either of the two shaders here. So I can, if I connect this here, you can see now we have half of the islands getting one image and uh, to best demonstrate this, I can just use colors. So A can be red, can be blue and uh, red can, this other one can be blue. Let's say if we wanted to introduce some green colors, you know, like that. Again, we just need another node here. Again, you have to get it, the value from the random. Now this time we can do anything above 0.66, 6, yeah. You see, we get that. And now to blend the two, again, we need another one here. Again, just blend these and I just use uh, this. Now P 
play with the slider until you see all the different colors you have and the only thing we're missing is the green so i can until we see all the colors so we have blue yellow green and red which are all the colors here so you can mix monodes and uh, just now we can reconnect these so that was the, the core structure of uh, this generator everything else is just polishing and just exposing the necessary nodes i saw like uh, the spread here how spread these are and uh, that is just uh the transform a random c to just generate different sets you can see how i set this up so these are the Im all the images that i used about i think 14 go in the same setup that we had and uh, i can even adjust the color if i want the animation was very, very simple now let me show you how i animated these details quite easily now we want the camera to be orthographic instead of perspective so if i wanted to make some animation like this i tried creating these animations in after effects but i found they need to be much faster at uh, making them than after effects how the final frame would look so they would pile up until they, they make something like that i would select them and uh, mark up a keyframe for them uh, which would be the final keyframe so something like that and then you can push them away from the screen and now we have our animation looking like that you can even add some extra effects so maybe scale them like that and maybe give them some rotation like that and then maybe hold them down like that and then finally they can move away the trick is to offset each individual object sees animation but uh, there is no way to do that in blender so for example i can select these the second keyframes like that and uh, offset them so that they come later in the animation and uh, that will give me a nice animation effect as you can see there a much delayed animation but uh, it's ha very hard to do uh, manually you would have to go in individually and find the the corresponding keyframes for each object and uh, offset them like that uh, to have an animation like that you can see how that looks it's very very hard so i resorted to python to add in that functionality uh, because it's way too difficult to do uh, manually i've looked for tutorials on how to do it and uh, the only way i could do it was uh, using python so i just added the functionality in uh, my quick functions add-on which you can get on at the blender market uh, if you're a patreon you already have access to that and uh, if you're a youtube member you also have access to, to the add-on and uh, yeah so i'm going to leave a li link in the description so the way it works is that uh, it you just have a selection like that and i can see the keyframes we have so what it does it creates the offset for you so i have these animation functions and i can do a linear offset uh, now we have an offset but i think it's uh, very very small so let me clear that uh, you you can determine how much offset you want so let's say i want five frames i can do linear offset and i get something like that so we get uh, that animation like that now i think it's uh, a very interesting way to make animations and uh, if you don't want that linear offset i can clear that so that we go back to the default animation and do a random offset which would just create random loading screens and actually i have a few renders i made like that like this other loading screen scaling down things randomly uh, so let me just select everything a clear offset i just have this scaled down so reduce the speed so they scale like that so it's very simple meshes just distributed like a grid like this now if i turn on linear offset you can see the transitions we have i can even do a reverse linear offset so that the transition starts from the other side like that clear that to go back to the default I can run, do a random offset and that will do just a random offset like that. I have this. Let me first clear the animation. You can see the just bars scaling up like that. And all I did is set a random linear animation and I can see how easily that turned things. I clear that to go back to default. Use a random. Now you can see now I can get bars animated like that. So I know most of you are learning Blender to make your own movies and it's hard to find the right resources to teach yourself. Here is one that you should add to your list. Uh, this is a course about making action-like chess sequences 
and uh, you can just look at the demo here it's perfectly executed you would think it's from a fast and furious action sequence and uh, yeah so this course uh, teaches you how to animate cars in detail and uh, animating cameras because uh, just animating cars is not enough you also have to know how to edit and uh, create immersive camera movements so yeah this course is available on blender market uh, links are going to be in descriptions and uh, it's a well detailed course with over 64 videos to make a professional looking animation and uh, the course also in comes with uh, some assets that you can use in your own renders like these buildings and uh, other assets if you want the course links are going to be in the description after you make your animation quiz sequence you probably don't want the streets to be empty to increase the stakes in your scene you might want to add some crowds and uh, this procedure crowds is an amazing add-on for that i uh, just look at how easily you can add animated crowds in your scenes so imagine you have a crowd like this and uh, then you add in the car chase scene uh, i think you can make a perfect action sequence with a combination of these two assets use these crowds to fill up stadiums concert scenes are like this yeah so it's going to be a very very useful uh add-on for you so yeah all links are going to be in the description uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video